Greetings, my beautiful lovelies. It's Emmy. Welcome back. Today, I'm going to be making butter, and I'm going to be using a nearly 100-year-old tool, and this is called the Daisy Butter Churn, and it was loaned to me by my lovely Aunt Susie, who collects wonderful things, but isn't this thing marvelous? Look at it. Daisy Churn number 20, patent pended. February 14th, 1922. Daisy Churn Manufacturing Company, St. Louis, Missouri, made in the USA. These gears were a little bit stiff, so I oiled them, and now they turn beautifully. And as I turn this crank, is that the color differential? Uh, anyways, so as I crank this handle, these gears change the direction of the cranking up here and rotate this paddle down below. We're gonna add whipping cream to this, and then after lots of agitation, the cream will turn into butter. Apparently, what the churning does is it breaks the membrane of the fat molecules and allows the fat to kind of float around, and the fat begins to clump together. And then it creates kind of a foam. This is what we get when we get whipped cream, fluffy foam. Right? And if we continue to beat everything together, the fat globules clump more and more and more together and finally separate from the buttermilk, creating butter. So that's where buttermilk comes from. It comes from the butter making process. It usually sours a little bit. That's why it has a little bit of a kind of yogurty flavor. I remember being in preschool making butter in little baby food jars and shaking jars of cream around in a circle and I didn't really understand what we were doing, but we did it and I remember being very impatient about it. <laughs> so I haven't made butter in a very, very long time. To get a few pointers on how to make butter from cream, I watched English Heritage's How to Make Butter the Victorian Way. If you haven't seen it, I will put the link down below. It's a delightful video. It's a delightful channel if you're not familiar with English Heritage. They do Victorian era recipes in an authentic Victorian kitchen in Victorian garb. It's just delightful. Definitely check them out. Very historical and period, but you learn a lot. It's very interesting to see some of those recipes cooked in the way they would have been cooked over a hundred years ago. Anyways, back to the daisy churn. Let's go ahead and make ourselves some butter. So I've already washed my daisy churn and I've oiled the gears. So we are ready to make this. So let me take this top part off. So I've got nearly a quart here of whipping cream that I've allowed to sit at room temperature for a bit. From what I've read, it's better to churn this at a warmer temperature rather than having very cold cream because it will take much longer. So let this warm up a bit before you churn it. So I'm gonna pour that in. I've read anywhere from 50 to 65 degrees. So the way this would have worked about 100 years ago is that the cows would be milked and the milk would be allowed to sit overnight. And the cream and the fats, of course, would float to the top of the milk. And the next day, that would be scraped off the top. And that's what we would have here. Antique daisy churns are actually quite collectible. The glass portion of this is original, but the crank part, I believe, actually came from a different churn because the original daisy churns actually had wooden paddles rather than these kind of galvanized um, paddles here. So it's pretty common to find different parts from different churns. Now we're going to place the churn on top screw it down and now placing our hand in this very handy handle we're going to crank it so according to fanny Kelly in the english heritage video she says that it's important to have a steady pace when it comes to churning she also says the churning process can be dependent on the weather or even your mood or disposition so i'm feeling pretty sunny today so i'm hoping this doesn't take too long to churn but i will be looking at the clock from what I've read, this can take anywhere from 15 minutes to 45 minutes, depending on the weather, depending on the humidity, depending on the temperature and the temperature of your cream. So let us start the timer. This is so cool. I love the sound. You should have heard this when I first got it. It would just barely turn. It sounded terrible. This is sounding pretty good. It's kind of like a whistle to it. Fanny says it's also important to listen to the butter. You'll actually notice the textural changes based on the sounds as well as the feel of the butter inside of the churn. So I'm gonna to continue to crank this and hopefully it'll be more like 15 minutes instead of 45 minutes, but I'll let you know. <laughs> All right, see you in a bit. 
So I've been cranking for about 10 minutes and now it's beginning to become more difficult to crank. It's harder to crank and you can definitely feel some resistance in the churn itself. And when I opened it, it looks like whipped cream that's gone too far. And the color is changing also. Rather than being white, it's starting to turn yellow. This is kind of great. It does take quite a while. And I mean, I've only been doing this for about 10 minutes. Oh yeah, getting really thick now. Here we go. This is so, so cool. Now it's really starting to separate. Look at that. It's turning yellow. The watery parts, or the buttermilk, is starting to get thinner and more watery, and we're starting to get more fatty chunks. Okay, we're getting close. Put this back on. So we're at the stage now where the foam cells are beginning to break and leak out the buttermilk. This is great! It's really beginning difficult to turn. So I think we're at the butter stage now. Oh, this is so cool. I love this. You can actually see this progression and this transformation of cream to butter. Okay, let's open it up now. So just after a few cranks, look at that. Butter! We have butter. This is so great. I've got a colander here lined with a little bit of cheesecloth. So here we go. Look at that beautiful butter. Isn't that wonderful? So now we're gonna grab our butter, squeeze out as much of the buttermilk out as possible. We're gonna reserve this, and we can use this to make pancakes. Now we're gonna open this up, and we're going to rinse the butter with some cold water. Again, we're trying to remove as much of the buttermilk as possible, so the butter lasts longer, less likely to go rancid. So wash the butter, drain it of water. For the next step, we're going to pat the butter. This is going to remove any excess buttermilk and water. Typically, you would use something called butter pats, which are just two wooden paddles that have some texture on them to kind of shape and squeeze the butter. I'm going to be using a couple wooden spatulas. This would also be done on a marble slab to keep the butter cool. I'm using a baking tray that I've overturned. Okay, so here's our butter. So great, look at that beautiful yellow color. All right, so now we're just gonna press it. So this is a stage where we season the butter. So I'm gonna be using some salt. If we wanted to make this an herbal butter, this is when we would add the herbs. So add a good amount of salt to this. So we're getting more of the whey to come out. I can see why the paddles are textured to prevent the butter from sticking to the paddles and wasting any of that precious butter. Alrighty, so here is my beautiful butter. I've patted it, I've shaped it into this beautiful little puck of buttery goodness. It has a beautiful yellow hue to it. Let's give our butter a taste. Dee -dee -dee. This is great. Super spreadable because it's at room temperature. Oh my goodness. I have never tasted freshly churned butter. Well, that's not exactly true. I did taste it in preschool, but I don't really remember what it was like. <laughs> okay, there's my buttered toast. Let's go ahead and give this a taste. Itadakimasu. Mmm. That is delicious. Perfect amount of salt. I just gave it a good sprinkle, but good amount of salt in there. Just enough to heighten the creamy, dairied flavors of the butter. There's a really nice, complex, creamy, dairied flavor to this that you don't ordinarily taste when you have store-bought butter. Granted, this is at room temperature, although I do keep my butter at room temperature. This has just a more enhanced, creamy, dairied whipped cream flavor to this. It's just lovely, absolutely divine and lovely. Mm. And on toast, 
best friends forever. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Really, really nice. So there you have it. Homemade, freshly churned butter using a almost 100-year-old contraption. It worked. It worked beautifully. If you got a good you know, hour of time to churn the butter, to pat the butter, to wash the butter and shape the butter, then you know, go ahead and try it. And if you have a beautiful Aunt Susie who can loan you a daisy churn, then you should definitely try this homemade churned butter absolutely delicious delicious but it also really makes me appreciate the cost of butter and the ease of just grabbing it off the shelf at the grocery store and saying yes i'd like a pound of butter please love it i have a deeper appreciation for this beautiful thing called butter Alrighty, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed that one. I hope you guys learned something. Please share this video with your friends. Follow me on social media. Like this video, subscribe, and I shall see you in the next one. Toodaloo, take care, bye.